Hi, so tonight I'm going to be doing part of the Blue Fairy Soap. I have all my oils and butters melted and mixed with the lye water solution. And I actually had to use some of this to pour off for the little crowns and for an embed for the other soap for June. So I'm going to pour off just a little bit in this cup at first that I need for the ground in the second soap. There. I'm gonna set that off to the side. And then I'm gonna just put in half of this bottle of the scent because then the other half of the soap will have the rest. So it is a really nice blend that's called In the Garden. And it is Hoewood, Lemon, Frankincense, Lang Lang, Orris Root, Lavendin, Yarrow, Violet, Bergamot, and Red Champ... I'm not even sure how to say that. <laughs> red Champaka, Gujam Balsam, Vetiver, and Lavender. And it really does, it really does smell like a garden. It is really nice. It was one of their spring scents. So I'm just going to put in, is that about half? Yeah, a little bit more. About half of the bottle. Because this is going to be the piece inside. And then I'll pour the rest in when I do the background tomorrow. Grab my mold. It's just a very simple part in the first bit here. Now, here is my cookie cutter. It's an angel or a fairy, whichever you rather use it as. Okay, it looks like I'm gonna have to go that direction. And it is just barely enough. and then break the pieces away from the sides. That is the easiest way to do it. Now, this is when it gets tricky. This is a good, good cookie cutter too, so it's not too intricate. This is why you don't want it too rock hard either, is you just kind of with one finger push, hold the soap down on a table, and then the other one you slide it off. So I'm going to go ahead and do another one, and then these will all be ready for the next part. Push down. And with metal cookie cutters, they have the sharp side and then the, the kind of ridged side. I don't know if you can see that right there. See the ridge? And that is the top. So that gives you something to push on and you really want the sharpest edge to be what goes through. And again, just try to gently break away the extra. Perfect. 
and then you set it on the table you hold it down with one hand gently pull up you can always like trim around things that was a little lumpy there but i'll take a knife and smooth that out but here we go so i'm going to get all these cut out and we'll head to the next part Okay, quickly from going from one video to the next like I already explained I'm doing all the same color for the background of both of June's soaps so I need to get the rest of this going here quickly as possible it's very hot today thunderstormy the humidity Wisconsin is always so funny. It's just it's cold. It's cold. It's cold and then all of a sudden wham hot But it's only because it's gonna get very stormy in the next few days and then it's gonna cool back down to like the 60s so Still you're not really prepared for the heat here when it comes quickly As a matter of fact, I'll be making June and or, I'm sorry July and August soon too to avoid having to make those when it's super hot in this house This is something I learned last year from my first year of being here So I'm going to add the rest of the uncolored and just a little bit of this indigo Get this all mixed up as quick as possible here Getting thick And when I think of June, I think of June 20th, which is the summer equinox, the longest day of the year. I had two, no, three very special people in my life born on that birthday. And it's just something very magical about the longest day of the year. Where it doesn't get dark for such a long time. And, and it made me think, of course, of... Shakespeare and Midsummer Night's Dream and fairies and all of that folklore that goes around around that so I'm using the rest of the spring garden or I'm sorry in the garden I used the first half to make the fairies as you saw so this is just going to be for the background and thankfully it loosens my batter back up which is wonderful okay I don't know, I think I might do a touch more indigo because I really want it to kind of match the color of blue that the Blue Fairy book is. So those fairy tale books were written essentially by Andrew Lang and he knew to include in the foreword of them that how much his wife actually helped him, which at the time period is so cool because... You know, most men back then would have just took complete credit for it. But he knew that she had helped so much in the writing of things and the translating. She could translate. She knew very, a lot of languages. I'll have to look up how many. can't think right offhand here. But she, she was a master of languages, so she knew how to translate these old folk tales and fairy tales into English to make all these. And there was... Again, I don't know how many of these books they made, but each one was a different color. The yellow fairy book, the green fairy, the blue fairy. But the blue fairy was my favorite and the one that I actually have. So you'll see the footage of that. So again, I've just poured a little bit into the bottom of the mold. And now I'm going to start putting them in. And just like I did way back in my black cat soap, video of course you want to place them as close as to each other as you can so there's no space in between because the batter will flow in between and you'll have holes and weird you know it won't cut right Yeah. 
last one. Make sure all the fairies are touching each other. Good. Okay. Now comes the tricky part because it's getting hot. Pour some in. And then we're going to wiggle it all around like crazy to try to get it in all those little holes around their wings. And I'm going to save some, if I can, as soap dough to fix any holes because you always want to make sure that you have some to help fix things. This, I've never used this cookie cutter before and it is very, very close to the same size. So Lord only knows if there's going to be spaces and gaps, but let's hope not. This turned a really pretty color of blue, just what I was hoping for. Make it look like that cover. The cover of the book is blues and golds and a little white. And the sides of the pages are gold. Awesome. So there's enough left for me to keep some soap dough, which is good, just in case. Now, gloves are super messy. I'm going to wipe them off. Now, I have crowns that I colored that you saw also in the beginning with lemon peel powder and little tiny butterflies because the book had butterflies as well on it and it can kind of look like little fairies from a distance. So let's start, let's flip it around and start the other way. Okay, so I'm back the next day and as you can see I've cut a few and um, the loaf it it did have it's a little caved in on the sides so I'm kind of at a loss right now trying to decide whether I'm gonna try to you know fix and build the sides up with some soap dough where they dent in but let's get on with cutting first and then I'm still not done, of course, even if they weren't like that. I am going to add some gold onto the crowns, and I'm going to paint some details for the fairies themselves so that it doesn't look like a ghost. See, right now she kind of looks like a ghost. And there's some holes to fix, and like right here, it flowed in between them a little bit, so you just have to gently scrape that away. They need a lot of work to get them where I'd like them to be, but all in all, they're still really cute. I'll get them whipped into shape here, and they smell really good. That one turned out good, see? And then just a little bit of stuff. If you take a very dull knife that with a straight edge, and just barely scrape across it once they're not so soft, like a day or so, it will get that right off. I have that problem before with the cat soap. And like on this one, I just cut, even though the, that part of her dress, that is going to be her dress, 
so that's okay that that's a little bit blue because it's going to get painted over anyway so as long as I clear the the wings and the head part it should be fine some of these butterflies are getting cut Maybe I'll turn it the other way. Okay, all in all she turned out pretty good. I think I'll probably leave, even though it comes in the sides like that, I think that's okay. And I have mixed up some purple clay with distilled water and some organic cocoa powder also with distilled water. And then I have this eco glitter that's just going to be for the crowns. So let's start with her dress. And it's okay if it's a little wispy at the end because I, I think that looks pretty like that. See? Just like that. And let's go on to the hair. And on the book, it was brown hair. And also, brown hair is special to me because my two children have brown hair. And my mom and my sister, and quite honestly, all of her kids too. actually baking my son's birthday cake right now his birthday is tomorrow and although this will this video will not come out till it's long over but boy that smell of the chocolate brownie part smells so good and ironic while I'm painting with cocoa powder so that looks very pretty now I'm going to switch brushes to a smaller brush that I can do the gold with. And I will probably, after the video, paint the rest of these before I touch the glitter again because it does get all over your fingers and quickly too. carefully start to work on getting just a little bit on the crown just to make it sparkly only because the book ha actually has gold pages as you could see from that footage of it it has that gold leaf paper that's so nice on a big hardbound book and there's gold details all over the cover as well So there she is. And the top with the butterflies. I'll get better pictures here in just a little bit. But thank you so much for watching. And this one and Cappadocia will be in the next shop update on the full moon on June 14th. 
shop links are listed below. And if you like this video and you like naturally colored soaps and bath treats and candles, please think about subscribing because I make new soaps every month. Take care. Happy summer.